The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome to The Ram with Coach Gately, a new show produced in collaboration with WFUV Radio and BronxNet Television. We'll be taking you behind the scenes of Fordham Women's Basketball throughout the season. You'll get to meet the players, get inside tips on how to improve your hoops game, and we'll have you covered on everything Fordham Rams. Alongside Dominic Capone, I'm Emmanuel Barbari. Dom, excited for this. Very excited for the new era, and we're very thankful that Coach Gately and the rest of the players can join us, make the trek to BronxNet Studios, and get started on this new show. This new show, a little bit of background. Fordham Women's Basketball has five 21 seasons over the last seven years. 2014 brought along an Atlantic 10 championship, and last year saw a WNIT Sweet 16 run. But the program is still working towards its ceiling. The driving force is the eighth-year head coach, whose basketball acumen and individual player attention has accumulated over 600 career wins. We'll sit down with Coach, bring in a couple players, and break down the Rams' recent efforts. Let's take a look back. Now we're happy to be joined by Fordham Women's Basketball head coach Stephanie Gately, who recorded her 150th career win in that Columbia game as a Ram. Coach, it's exciting, right? You get a career milestone, now you get a new set. And you got to get your hair colored because you're older, right? <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. No, as I, as I said to you guys after the game, it's, um, you have great assistants, you have you know, a great associate head coach, and I, and I have great players. So you get those milestones because of all those things. It's a, a complete team effort. Coach, six and five, happy, disappointed. What's the feeling around the team? Happy. I mean, never content. I mean, still hungry. I mean, you're, you're either hungry or satisfied. Mm -hmm. We're not satisfied. We're hungry. Uh, I think a couple could have gone either way. But the thing I've been telling the team, like, we could have played a really soft schedule but never really know what our warts are. You know, the only way, like, the, the pit game, for example, that's a game we should have stolen on the ro road and could have stolen on the road. But um, now we know the little things we need to do when we get to conference time. So if we don't play those games, I don't know if we find those things out. So I am definitely feel we're headed in the right direction. For some who don't know the background behind your team, over your tenure, 57-5 and five when you hold opponents under 50 points. That Columbia game, the first time this season, you held an opponent under 50 points. What did that feel like? It felt great. And the kids were excited after the game, you know, and they celebrated it, which we talk all the time that defense is going to dictate everything for us. And, not only did we hold them under 50, it was their lowest scoring game. You know, their lowest scoring game up to that point had been 58. So for us to hold, you know, I think they, they're, they were a young team, but they were also an offensively explosive team. So for us to hold them under 50, I, I think, was a great step in the right direction defensively for us. How important was it to make it to the final of the Gulf Coast Showcase, beating a team like Washington, Ball State, and then finally getting to play number 10, Texas? You know, I was concerned because of the way we were playing going into that tournament. You know, mm -hmm. we, we had a couple games that, you know, the Northeastern game we let slip away, and um, you have to be able to put people away, and you got to know how to finish games. And so we went into that Ball State game, and we were down and, you know, had to kind of figure out how th we had been up against Penn State, up against Ball I mean, mm -hmm. up against Northeastern, and now we're down. So I thought the kids showed a lot of toughness coming back in that game, and I think the, the most – Two of the most complete games we played have been Columbia and Washington. So that Washington game, we played a really complete game. And, and I thought we played pretty well against Texas. I just think their size and, and, and their athletic ability wore us down. And speaking of the kids, the freshmen and the first-year players, including Valisi Tavui, Meg Johnson, and Caitlin Downey, who we'll have later on, what strides have you seen from them in the first 11 games? I mean, with freshmen, it's always growth. I mean, they're coming from high school where they really haven't been challenged in the respect of details. We're very detail-oriented. So... They're not used to being held accountable for boxing out or getting defensive position. They kind of just, you know, play. And mm -hmm. when you get to college, and, and I tell the kids all the time, the you know, majority of our games are going to be 50-50 games. So how do we make it 51-49 in favor of us? You know, it's detail. So the little things are going to determine games at the end. And so we, we really, really need to hone in on that. And that's one of the things that we're teaching the young kids now. Some of the more difficult points of the season, the loss to Penn State, the loss to Georgetown, where you kind of went cold in the second mm -hmm. half from the perimeter. A game against Texas where you actually hung around, team, your team was unconscious in the first couple minutes of the game. Yeah. What do you think is more of the team's MO, a team that will attack and play defense or one that really thrives in the perimeter? There's a difference between what I think and what I want. 
You know, I think early on is we were letting offense dictate things, and I think, you know, we've been trying to hammer home the defense has got to dictate. Offense is going to be a bonus. I mean, you take, for example, Lauren Holden. I said, Lauren, you know, Lauren, you know, she got back on track against Columbia, but she had been struggling offensively. I said, take the offense out of it. You know, the offense is a bonus for us. We, I, I just need to know that you're going to be, you know, solid on the defensive end and solid taking care of the ball. And, you know, let the offense be a bonus. Don't let that affect the rest of your game. And I think not only individually, but as a whole, we were doing that. The games that we lost, I think we let the times that we hit those ruts offensively affect us defensively. I, I keep going back to the kids all the time about Quinnipiac, Texas. Quinnipiac shot 28% and were out rebounded by 13 and lost to Texas by one. And if you had taken those stats and looked at that on paper, you would have probably thought that would be a 35 to 40 point loss to a top 10 team. But that was proven that if you play defense, regardless of how you shoot, you're going to stay in the game. And speaking of the record going back to a 4-1 and one at home, 0-3 oh on the road, how hard is it to win in someone else's gym? It's really hard. I mean, you, you, I mean, you got to be able to put people away. I mean, you look at, you know, the pit game was right there for the taking. And we've gone over the tape. We've watched it as a team, the things that we need to improve on. And hopefully the next time we're faced with that situation, we'll be able to do that. Yeah. Our next challenge, obviously, will be Iona. What have you thought about the development of your big so far this season? You've played a smaller lineup in the early stages of the season, but you have – players like Felici Tavui and Haley Gillis, who you hope to eventually have a big role in this. What have you seen from them, and how do you like their progress so far? I mean, the progress continues. I think just, you know, for us, you know, we're defensive-oriented. So, like, with, with Haley and Felici, Haley's coming back from an injury, so she's slowly but surely coming back. With Felici is, you know, I trust her offensively, but right now I don't have the same trust defensively. And that trust has to be there defensively for me to play you. So, you know, we've gotten some extra sessions in, and she's been asking me to work more. So I think the more confidence and the more repetition she get, I think the more confidence she will be. But we're also playing teams where their fives are step-out shooters. So if they got a step-out shooter at the five, I, I really can't put a big in because they don't match up well with it. So a lot of it just depends on what we're going against. And there was at times, um, I'm looking at the game against Georgetown. I believe you guys only scored 10 points in the second half. There was another game you guys only scored 11 points. Mm -hmm. What happened in those second halves? No, thanks, Tom. Thanks for reminding <laughs> me of that. Yeah. That's didn't, my job. didn't lose any sleep over those games anyway. Thanks. But... Um, just went cold, just mm -hmm. flat out went cold. And I think what happens is when a couple of people go cold, it becomes contagious. And then all of a sudden, then you start thinking, and, and now you start hesitating, and you hope to not have too many games like that. Like for us, I always say, guys, if we play defense, we will be in every game. If we play defense and shoot well, we're going to win by more than 10. If we play defense and don't shoot well, we can steal it. But if we don't play defense and don't shoot well, it's a blowout the other way. So defense is always going to be the common denominator. Well, speaking of hot and cold, win over Columbia, trying to ride that into the game against Iona. When we come back, we introduce a new segment called The Lineup. Each week, we'll get an inside look from two Ram players. This week, it's going to be senior Lauren Holden and freshman Caitlin Downey. Stay right with us. Welcome back to the Ram with Coach Gately. We now head over to our new segment called The Lineup. And this week, we're joined by Lauren Holden and Caitlin Downey. We're surrounded by Rams right now. <laughs> Guys, welcome. How's it going? Good. How are you? Thank you. So, Lauren, we'll start with you. You're a senior. You're underway in your senior year, fresh off a pretty convincing junior year. How's the early stages of senior year treating you? I mean, it's been good. Um, obviously, like, there were some games that I wish we could have uh, stolen, but um, overall, like I love the group of girls that we have, and I think it's like it's been awesome, just with them. And shifting over to Caitlin now, freshman, coming into your first year here in college, how's the transition going? 
It's um, definitely been a big adjustment going from high school basketball to just mm -hmm. um, the college lifestyle. Overall, though, I'm a I love the team at, in general, so just being with teammates that you enjoy being around makes it a lot easier. And speaking of those teammates, is there one upperclassman, maybe Lauren, that took you under her wing and showed you the ropes? Oh, I would say definitely Mary and um, Lauren were definitely the two girls that talking to me after practice, just trying to keep me confident through everything, were definitely big in helping me. I like we have a senior and a freshman in the room. <laughs> Lauren, uh, do you love taking that leadership role, especially since you're on your way out in your last year and you're trying to mentor the next generation of Rams? Um, yeah, it's definitely something that I enjoy doing. I mean, it's something that I had to grow into as well. Um, so I enjoy that and I enjoy like, um, you know, helping the freshmen or like underclassmen with certain things and they're awesome. So I love like working with them and helping them out sometimes. We were talking about some of the peaks and valleys of the season with coach mm -hmm. and Dom referenced it in this segment. What's been your favorite part of the season so far and uh, what do you think the team can improve on most? I would just say, like, um, my favorite part is just, like, when we have great team wins, like, against Columbia, when we put together that game, like, defensively, specifically, that's something that, you know, we strive for in practice and we work on and we work on. And so to finally do that and, like, to have a complete game like that, it really felt good. And then um, I would just say, like, uh, there was a few games we could have stolen that were kind of disappointing. But... Again, we learn from those, and we, uh, you know, we go into practice the next day ready to go, and we just learn from those mistakes. So then, when conference comes, we've we've already seen those, uh, you know, types of teams in those situations. So. And speaking of things you guys need to work on as a team, how about individually? What do you want to improve on the rest of the season? How about you, Lauren? You guys can both answer. I would say one of the biggest things that the coaches have emphasized with me specifically is guarding guards and being able to stay in front and keeping an active hand and just trying to not always go after every try to steal, just being very disciplined on defense and doing your job and owning your role as a defensive player as opposed. And I know you're a senior, but anything you want to improve on the rest of the year? Um, I would just say, like, owning my, just owning my role, too, just, like, as a leader, as a captain. And uh, I just want to do, like, whatever it takes to win, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does a game like Washington or Texas, where you're playing some of the best teams in the country, prepare you for what's going to be an interesting test, your first conference game against George Washington, the team that won the A-10 tournament last year. I definitely think like we can take that tournament in Florida where we played those uh, high-level teams, and you know it just proved that we can compete against them, and we can beat them too, and we can hang in there with, uh, with those games. So uh, carrying that over to conference, uh, that should, uh, you know, we should have a lot of confidence doing that. So, yeah. Speaking of conference play, is there one team you guys are looking out for? Is there a bunch of teams, what's uh, the feeling going into conference play? I think we always talk about Dayton as being one of the leaders and also Duquesne. I know they're returning a, a strong lineup. So just being able to attack those teams that are on the top of our conference and being able to lead the pack. You, Lauren? Yeah, I mean, um, just going off of that, when we uh, got the preseason rankings, obviously, like, you want to take down those top teams like Dayton and Duquesne and stuff like that. But I think, like, to... Um, any any game can be t difficult. Any game can be tough as well. But um, so, you know, when we go into those games, no one really has a name on their jersey. But obviously, like the top teams, like that were preseason ranked, we want to, you know, obviously beat those. But everybody is like as a just senior, as difficult. You, you've been through the A10 a couple yeah. of times now. Is there that sense of almost parity where you enter that conference schedule and you feel like anyone can beat anyone? Absolutely. I mean, you see it in the tournament all the time. Like GW last year, I think was a sixth seed or fifth seed, one of those, and they end up taking it. So, um, you know, anybody can be anybody in conference uh, on any given day. So you got to come, show up, and like ready to go. Tom, you got anything else? I think that's it. <laughs> well, that's Lauren Holden. That's Caitlin Downey. They're two integral parts of the Rams, and we'll look to lead the Rams deeper into the eight ten tournament this time. Reference GW. That's when conference play begins. That's January fifth a date on the road before entering the rest of conference play. So coming up, we're going to introduce another new segment. Jackson Heil goes on the court with these two as we delve even further into the X's and O's behind a winning Division I program. We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx. 
on BronxNet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at BronxNet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. BronxNet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> BronxNet. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ram with Coach Gately. We got a clan of Rams right now. Coach Gately, Caitlin Downey, Lauren Holden, myself, Jackson Heil. We're going to our on the court segment, brand new segment where we break down different drills that the players like to do in practice, and we're going to focus on some passing and shooting today. So, Coach, take it away. Well, I think sometimes young kids out there, you assume that it's a lot of stuff is very sophisticated when you go on to the next level, but we try to keep it as simple as possible. This basic drill is extremely basic. It's simple, but it's all it's very detailed oriented. As as Caitlin will attest to as a freshman, a lot of what we do is very detailed oriented. Right now we are number one in the country with the least amount of turnovers and I am on a mentoring group with a, a couple other head coaches, and they ask, do we do anything specific? Well, we keep track of our turnovers during practice, but this is a, a simple drill that we do you know, before practice at times just to work on our passing. So in this situation, I mean, these guys are obviously close together, so we're going to simulate what we would do. But um, if we're going to make a chess pass, Lauren's going to not only make a pass, but she's going to call Caitlin's name. That's a little thing, guys, for the kids out there, but it's a big thing. You can avoid a turnover by making sure the person you're passing to knows it's coming. Because sometimes somebody might be on a break and not be ready for that pass. When Caitlin catches the ball, she's got to get in triple threat. And triple threat is what, Caitlin? What are the three things you can do from triple threat? Uh, out of the triple threat, you can dribble, you can pass it, and you can shoot it. Because a lot of times kids will catch it, put it over their head, and now you're predictable. Defense knows you're not going to shoot it. You know, they know you're going to pass it. And so, therefore, we want to make sure they get in a triple threat. And they're always going to fake a pass to make a pass, just to get the defense to move. So why don't we do just a couple simple chest passes. Okay. Keeks. Got you, L. Caitlin. L. So, Caitlin. Yeah, we could, we could slow it down there. And just a question for all of you guys. I mean, when you mentioned the communication aspect of passing, how important is that for you guys? Because I think something that isn't really emphasized at the elementary level is how important communication, how important that is that to you guys? Lauren, why don't you take that? Um, it is very important. Like, communication is important to our program because, like, we need to communicate all the time on the court, just, like, on defense, on offense, and um, it basically, like, holds us together. And it's just, like, a little detail that's so simple, but it's something that is very crucial and, like, really important. To me, that would be the number one core, would awesome. be communication. And also, in terms of, you mentioned chess pass also. I, I think one of the things that also at the elementary level they emphasize is bounce passing as well. Is there a specific pass you prefer, or is it changed by situation? It depends. Like, like for me, like I've considered myself a shooter, so when if somebody's making a pass to me, I want to catch it off a chess pass. I don't want to catch it off the bounce. So mm -hmm. a lot of it depends on individual kids. Like, we want to know, do you want to drive right? Do you want to drive left? So, you know, these are kind of little nuances we learn throughout the season. And let's, let's go to the shooting aspect of it now because also communication very important there in terms of shooting. So I, I know you want to can break it down exactly what you want to do, but let, let's get into the shooting aspect. Well, if we're struggling bit. like a little bit, you know, one of the things I told Kiki and, and Lauren is it, if you guys just do form shooting across from mm -hmm. each other, the biggest thing is, you know, you want to get your arm in an L position, and the biggest thing is holding your follow through. That's the thing I see kids not doing. If you notice Lauren's in a great L position, the last two fingers should be these two fingers snapping the wrist and following through. So that, if you hear me a lot, especially when we're on the foul line, we like, follow through. Because a lot of times kids will shoot and walk away. I said, don't walk away till the ball hits the rim. And especially in foul shooting, foul shooting is 75% mental. And so we tell the kids all the time that, you know, don't be thinking about result or whether you're going to make or miss it and what it does to the effect of the game. Think about the process. So that way it takes your mind off of the actual result. Well, and question now for you guys. When you guys are in a shooting slump, I know you guys have both not shot the ball well to start the year, but it seems like things are coming around after that Columbia game. Is there anything in practice or in specific drills that you're focusing on specifically? Obviously, Coach mentioned the follow-through, but is there anything else that you guys are focusing on or working on more? Well, I think a lot of it is also a mental aspect, and it's just having to stay confident when you're in shooting slumps. Um, I think when you go back to your basics, it's just measuring up how you shoot, but at the end of the day, you have to have a shooter's mindset of being able, I'm going to make this next shot, or I know my teammates have the confidence in me to hit it. So it's just a matter of keeping 
that mentality, and I think you can get out of your slump pretty quickly if you're there. Lauren, anything for you? Yeah, I think um, just going off of what Caitlin said, it's a lot of it is mental. And so I think, like, for me, what I would try to do is just, like, catch it and just shoot it, like, not even thinking about it. If I was, like, open, like, obviously, if I'm open, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to shoot it. But, like, not even thinking about, oh, the defense is running at me, just, like, catching it and shooting it and not even thinking. So. Great stuff, guys. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Lauren. Coming up next, we'll wrap things up, do a quick look ahead. But first, let's take a quick break. in action, leading the Rams to their sixth win of the season. But now it's about securing win number seven ahead of the annual holiday classic at Rose Hill. Rejoined by Coach, we're probably going to get a less intense version of you right now. I, would, I, would <laughs> I hope so. I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm too close. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Wish <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Iona, it's, we've had a little time off, but, you know, everybody's faced this, you know, with finals, so there, there's no excuses. you got to be ready to play. You know, we typically practice December 22nd. We're giving them that day off, and um, so I think our kids will be ready to play. The practices have been solid, and I think their mindset will be strong. You went to Florida this year. You go to St. Louis every year for 810. Heading 10, 15 minutes down the road, that must be a cakewalk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if the funny thing is a couple years ago, you know, I, I guess we didn't know the bus couldn't go on a certain road, so it took us an hour and a half. So we had to delay the game. <laughs> oh, no. They had to, you know, stop the clock. We had to ask for 15 extra minutes, and, and it resulted in a very poor effort on our part and a loss there. So we've learned our lesson, and we are, will be taking the Ram bands. Now, you guys touched on it on that. You have some time off. You have some time off for your next game, I believe, against Maine after Iona. Is that good? Is that bad? Does it disrupt the flow of the team? It, it, you really can't control it. Everybody's in that same boat, you know. And, and so for us, it's like, 
you try to decide, do you, you, you have to get a game somewhere along the line just because you don't want too much time off. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so this is typical of what most teams are going to face. So everybody's basically going to be in the same situation that we are. You face Manhattan. This Iona team struggling a little bit. But we were talking about how the Manhattan game is kind of that local sense yeah. of pride when you're able to beat Manhattan, your cross down foe. Is there kind of that same sense against Iona that the schools are so close together? I mean, I would say so. It's like when I played at Villanova. I mean, the big five robberies. There was, you know, the records went out the window. You know, you were playing Temple, Vill you know, Temple Villanova, or Temple LaSalle, or Temple St. Joe's, or Penn. You know, what have you? I mean, um, it, it, there's no record. You know, and that's why Lauren was alluding to the fact that we see uh, we we spent a lot of time talking. There's no name on the jersey of who we're playing. You know, they stand between us being seven and five or six and six. We want to be average. Or we want to be above average. So for us, you know, we're very driven and very focused on making sure that we take care of the task at hand. Now, coming into conference play, how do you think your team stacks up against the top competitors in the conference? There's been a lot of parity. I mean, there's just been, you know, when you look at the, some of the scores across the board, like a Northeastern went in and they beat Dayton at Dayton, you know, and that's a game we, we probably could have and should have won on, on the road. And um, then you have somebody like Duquesne who's played a really tough schedule, and, you know, so they've been up and down. So, you know, they have, you know, the teams that struggled last year a little bit, VCU picking up some really good wins, and you see improvement in some of the bottom teams in Rhode Island, and, and UMass has gotten some good wins. So there's a lot of parity. I mean, I, I, I think it'll be, it'll be interesting our first game mm -hmm. against GW because they're the returning champs, and it's on the road. It's an 11 a.m. game, and that's another reason for that Florida trip, playing 11 a.m. to get used to that time. So I think we'll, we'll pro probably be ahead of the game because we have faced that earlier. I want to focus on Duquesne a little bit here because they were ranked number one in the preseason poll, and they did face Texas just like you guys mm -hmm. did. They've had a tough non-conference schedule. When you go up against Duquesne eventually, what would you say is the toughest aspect of their game to match up with? Their experience. I mean, they, they, they have a ex very experienced group back. You know, these seniors that have, you know, been to the NCAAs, they've you know, been to the um, NITs, and um, the tournament will be at their place. So I think what we're battling is their experience, their, their expectations to win. You know, so for us, it's just that we're still young. You know, 13 of our kids are freshmen or sophomores, so um, we're still gaining that experience. And I think that, you know, like I said, the toughness of our schedule has kind of springboarded us into having to grow up pretty quickly. Before we wrap up, I just want to ask you, what's your favorite road trip to go on in conference play with the team? I probably have to say Philly just because mm -hmm. it gets me back to where the boys grew up and, and where there's a lot of friends and family. Mm -hmm. So we get a great turnout there. So it would definitely have to be when we go back to Philly to play either the Sal or St. Joe's. For us, it's always the furthest one from oh, here. Of course. Dom's going to St. Louis this year. I'm a little jealous. A little jealous. <laughs> I went to St. Louis last year. We got to go on the arch. That was great. Can't wait for that again. If we get to do that again, I'm not complaining. I'm just happy to go. <laughs> yeah, we already are <laughs> able to live it up in <laughs> Florida. You guys got a couple yeah, wins. That Florida. Everyone wins in this scenario. <laughs> Coach, thanks so much for your time oh, today. Oh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate Thank it. You so, so much. Uh, big thanks to Coach Gately for coming in, as well as the players. A great first edition of the Ram with Coach Gately. And as I mentioned before, big thanks to all the players, Coach coming in, as we'll do every week with the coach segment and the on-the-court segment. Until next time, for Jackson Heil and Dominic Capone, I'm Emmanuel Barbari. Thanks for tuning in. The Ram with Coach Gately has been a production of WFUV Sports in correlation with Fordham Athletics and BronxNet TV.